Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. It's not going to be easy to get around Metro Detroit this weekend with crews now shutting down a 19 mile stretch of I-75. Also tonight, an emotional tribute in Sterling Heights for a teenager hit and killed while driving to work. We're going to start here with a, a look at the weekend weather wise and oh man, you get to leave the windows open again tonight. Andrew is in for Ben uh, with sunshine on tap for tomorrow, but uh, the question is, will we stay dry the entire weekend? Well, let's hold on. Hold on to that good news. We have we remain dry for at least the first half of the weekend, and the main thing is we've gone through an entire day, believe it or not, with no showers, no thunderstorms. Happy to bring that good news to you, and it remains dry overnight. Feeling good right now. Some temps already in the 50s. Lapeer, good evening. You've got at 57 at this hour, 54 for our neighbors over in Port Huron, 56 in Sandusky, while it's in the mild 60s elsewhere, including at Metro Airport at 67. Mount Clemens checking in at 60 degrees right on the nose. Maybe folks are putting the windows up over in, or in uh, Monroe or in Adrian with temperatures in the middle and upper 60s as well. We'll see everyone get down to the 50s overnight and it looks beautiful outdoors. 67 degrees currently, a calm wind, Dew points are in the 50s, a sure sign that we're in the comfort zone and no rain around here or anywhere in the great state of Michigan. A few showers off to our west, but those are going to dive south of Chicago and south of Michigan during the overnight hours. So we've already gotten through one day of dry weather and we still have dry weather when we wake up on Saturday. Overnight lows are going to be in the 50s. We'll see 59 degrees overnight tonight, a light wind out of the southeast at around four to nine miles per hour. 75 between Square Lake Road and eight mile will be closed and it starts right now. Right now, let's check in with Mara McDonald, who's live along the I-75 service drive near eight mile and Mara, this stretch uh, basically closed through the entire weekend, correct? That's that's right, Jace. It will reopen, you know, Monday morning in time for rush hour, but take a look behind me. Um, most of the ramps along 75 started closing down earlier this evening, and then, as though some sort of magic switch got thrown, they closed the freeway down at 11, and now all the traffic has been diverted on to the service drives. This is a substantial closure, which goes from Bloomfield Township to Detroit. It's closed in both directions, and here's why. MDOT is trying to achieve two things this weekend. The biggest is demolishing the 11 mile overpass and then working on assorted bridge repair throughout the 75 corridor that will be shut down. All that traffic will be detoured onto Woodward for the weekend, so expect heavier than usual traffic there. It's all a part of the ongoing modernized 75 project, which is tackling a major overhaul of the freeway, which has not been rebuilt since the 1960s. Tonight, we've also got good news about I-94 East, which has been shut down because of the flooding. It's now back open from Michigan Avenue to West Grand Boulevard. Back here live, the plan is to have the freeway in both directions reopen 5 a.m. Monday. And just a word of caution from MDOT, all that bridge work, that demolition and the repair on the others, it's dependent on the weather. So I'm sure they're very interested in what Andrew has to say. We're live along the 75 freeway on, well, near 8 Mile. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara. Family and friends gathering tonight to honor the life of 17-year-old Patrick Koschel. The 17 year old was killed just a few weeks after graduating high school. Larry Spruill is live at the Sterling Heights uh, Skate Park. That's a place that had special meaning for him, Larry. Yeah, that, that Jason and Kimberly, excuse me, they wanted to meet at this skate park to honor that 17 year old who died last week. Now, they even passed out candles and lit it in his honor. They said they wanted to meet here at that skate park because he loved this place so much. A huge circle of friends and family of 17 year old Patrick Koshel surrounded a Sterling Heights skate park Friday night. Everyone, including his parents, wanted to honor his life. He was our precious. He was our, our boy, our joy, our hope, our future. He was just everything. Patrick Koshel was killed in a car crash July 3rd at the intersection of Van Dyke and 18 Mile Road. Police said he was driving westbound on 18 Mile Road when he was hit by a Dodge Durango driving northbound. 
he later died. I was devastated for the last couple days. Now his death took a toll on everyone, especially his close friends. I kind of freaked out a little bit. I it, it didn't take it all well. I kind of started screaming and everything, and I kind of lost my mind a little bit because he was probably one of my best friends. He was my second half pretty much, so I like we did everything together. He was another person who guided me through you know, all the rough times I had to go through. He was like that, that dude. His friends said they would often ride their bikes at the skate park in Sterling Heights, so it's only right they would honor him at the very spot he loved. From now on, we ride for Patrick. End of story. And no matter how tragic our loss is, there is a hope. Thank you very much for everybody. And police did arrest the driver of that Dodge Durango. They believe that he was under the influence of alcohol and drugs. We are live in Sterling Heights tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Okay, Larry, thanks. Well, tonight there's new CDC guidance for the upcoming school year. The CDC says students and teachers who are fully vaccinated do not need to wear masks while inside. However, the CDC does recommend those who are unvaccinated continue to wear masks indoors. Meantime, the state is reporting 672 cases and 26 deaths over the past three days. Also, the state will announce the first winner of the vaccine sweepstakes Wednesday at 2 p.m. One million dollars is the grand prize. And we've also learned Metro Airport will receive more than $110 million from the American Rescue Plan. Detroit police officers gather for a vigil to remember a beloved member of the department. Officers, family and friends gathered at the 12th precinct to remember Corporal Darrell Cross, who died off duty this week. Interim Chief James White was related to Cross through marriage and says the turnout tonight shows the department is family. They're here for each other. They're here for this family. They're here to support them. And like you said, it's a Friday night in the summer and this parking lot is packed. And that, that's a testament to the type of person he was. I hate to say that, but was. Uh, but his memory will live on in all of our hearts, and we will never forget him. Yeah, I drove by through there tonight. So, so many people there. Uh, Cross grew up in Detroit and worked his entire career of more than 20 years right there at the 12th Precinct. In a local four update, Detroit police say they've seized two vehicles after this video showing cars doing donuts around a ring of fire. It happened on Seven Mile last week. Police say the stunt is a ritual to remember someone who's died. We're told crime intel analysts are now working to identify other cars that were involved. Former Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith was back in front of a judge today to determine if he will go to trial. Smith is accused of embezzling $600,000 from drug and forfeiture funds. I hear a defense being offered. It is somehow that unlike every other department in the county of Macomb, Eric Smith believed that he was a separate unit of government. Your Honor, when the government starts staying off the books, these funds were known, they were subject to audit year after year after year, so to keep calling them off book accounts is a complete mischaracterization. Smith is charged with 10 felonies, including racketeering and five counts of embezzlement. Last year, he pleaded guilty to federal obstruction of justice charges. In this case, he could spend decades in prison if convicted. Still ahead, a family suing a major theme park over photos taken with a costume character. The hand gesture the actor was making that the family says was racist and inappropriate. A failed carjacking attempt in Detroit. Three armed men forced the victim out of his car, but they weren't prepared for what happened next. But first, more violence on our local freeways. The rise in road rage shootings next.